Let's consider the following program. Let's look at the first line. This is x is assigned 3. Now what this will do, it will create a variable and it will store 3 in it. So x now has the value of 3. If we look at the next line of code, y is assigned 4, then what will happen after the execution of this? We'll have y and within that we will have the value 4. So y takes up the value of 4. So y is said to have the value 4. And this particular line will now print out the contents of x and y. And when it does, you can see it prints it here in the runtime. And you can see that we have x with 3 and y with 4. Now what we're going to attempt to do here is to swap the values of x and y. So y will have the value of x and x will have the value of y. Let's have a look at this line here. x is assigned y. And what we can see will happen is the contents of y will be transferred to the contents of x. Now x holds the value of y. Now if we go on to the next line, which is y is assigned x, what we'll see here is that what's in x will be transferred to y and we can see y now has has the value of 4. So in fact we haven't quite swapped as we thought because if we come to here now and we print out x and y we can see we get 4 4, when in fact it should have been 4, 3. Now the problem that existed here is when we copied what was in y to x we lost the original value of x which was 3. Before I go on with the rest of the video, I'd just like to put an aside in here. Remember, we looked in a previous video in the series that variables don't quite work like this in Python, but they're a good approximation, they're a good model. So I think it's okay here that we treat variables in the way we're looking at them here, as if they're boxes and we're moving values between them. But in fact, remember, Python doesn't quite work in this way. And I recommend if you're wondering what I'm talking about and you haven't seen the previous video in the playlist which discusses this, Maybe when you finish watching this video, might be a good idea to have a look at that. This program is an amendment of the previous that solves the problem of us losing the original value of x. Let's look at it one line at a time. If we look at the first line here, x is assigned 3, we can see x is given 3. If we look at this line, y is assigned 4, we can see y is given 4. And then we print x and y out to give us the 3, 4 here. Now let's consider this line here, z is assigned x what will happen? A variable z is created and a copy of the content of x is saved in z. So z now has the value of 3 and so does x. So we've saved the original value of x. Let's now consider this program statement. x is assigned y. What will happen here is the content of y will be copied to x replacing what was there before. So now x stores the content of y. And of course we've saved the value of x previously in z. Of course we now go on to execute this line. y is assigned z. Now what this will do, it'll take what's in z and it'll transfer it to y. And now y has the value of 3. And we can see here that x and y have now had their values swapped. So when we come onto this print statement here, we can see it gives this output here for 3 which we can see is the opposite of what it was before, 3, 4. And to allow this to happen, we have this extra variable here, z. Now let's consider this Python program here. And we can see we have x is 3, y is 4, and then we print x, y. Now when we run these three lines, they're the same as all the programs we've been looking at. So in effect, what will happen? We will get the variables x and y being created, as you can see here. And then, of course, we print x and y and we'll get 3, 4 being produced here. But what Python has different is this here, look. And what this is saying, let x be assigned y, and let y be assigned x. And you can see there is a comma here, and there's a comma here. And what happens when we look at the animation, we can see that they simply swap with each other. So when we come onto this line, print x, y, well, what that does, it simply prints the 4, 3, as you can see here. Whereas previously it was 3, 4. Consequently, we have this way to do it in Python using this multiple assignment. Now, in the next video, we'll have another look at multiple assignments, but we'll also look at something called a trace table, which is a very useful technique for assisting in understanding program code as well as helping find bugs. Check out the supporting website for these videos and consider subscribing to the YouTube channel and you'll get an automatic update every time I upload a new video on Python.